In this video, we're going to be working on something you see for about 30 seconds in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 movie, his Mattel football scanner. But it came out awesome. <laughs> All right, now we are over in the workshop area and we're going to start working on the scanner build. And of course, this is just the Mattel football game. And I got this on eBay when they were still a little expensive. So let's go ahead and whip these screws off. And uh, I like to keep them in this little soap dish <laughs> so I don't lose them. And again, I got this on eBay, still relatively cheap. And for the kit, I went with Soul Inertia. They have a little kit that has this little piece of, uh, you know, electronic thing that he sourced out. And you get some extra stickers with it. My uh, box came with stickers that are still okay, so I used those. And then you get a little file with it that you actually can see the uh, little scanner animation. We'll see that later. So now it's just a question, really, of taking this thing apart. And there's a ton of little screws, and you want to keep all of them, even though you're not going to use a lot of them again. And you're just going to, again, just bang this thing out and take it apart. Now, the one thing I'm going to tell you with this build is that you are going to be doing a lot of cutting and then recutting and, you know, gluing because you're going to try to get a cell phone to fit inside of this case. And you're going to have your coffee because, again, I do these things very early sometimes. <laughs> so I actually found a Samsung a Galaxy, I think it's a mini, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, so it isn't even a full size one. And it worked really well, I found it at a garage sale for like three bucks, of course it had a password in it, and I just, uh, you know, uh, did a hard reset, and you could just Google the information on how to do that, it's pretty simple. And here I'm just going to mark away sort of what I want to cut in the back, and then we need to mark off where this is going to go in the front. And again, I'm just going off of uh, some other uh, builds I saw some people doing on the web and from, you know, his scanner. That's all of, what, 30 seconds in the movie, if that. But it's such a neat little toy. So I'm just going to draw this out with a pencil to make sure I know where the actual thing is going to go. And the cool thing about this is, is it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact because this thing is going to, you know, we're going to beat the, this thing to crap when we weather it, uh, just like his was. And that's the fun thing about doing a lot of this Star-Lord stuff. It's a little forgiving in that you don't have to sort of be so exacting with everything. Because once you get that Dremel out, you know, plastic melts. So it isn't going to be a perfect build. So that's about the shape we're going to do. And that will uh, fit in there just nice. Actually, we'll do a lot more cutting. And here I'm just going ahead and we're, we're zipping pieces out. And we're being careful around that one button area because you don't want to break that off. And again, like I said, we are just cutting out, cutting out over and over again. Little pieces. Uh, I'm getting in there with some uh, clippers, uh, a little X-Acto knife. And now this little electronic thing had these little sort of things on the end of it. These little, I don't know what this thing is for. And... Uh, in some instructions, I've seen people drill those out, but all I did was sand them down. Pull them off and sanded them down. Now, you're gonna go ahead and fit this thing and fit that on there, and I'm like, oh wait, that's way too long. It goes over the off button, and that's not how it is in the, uh, the different uh, images I've seen. So, what we need to do is, we need to take a little bit of that circle area down. So I just used the sort of metal cutting bit with the Dremel and just broke that off and it got hot. <laughs> that's why I'm covering that up. And ouch, yep, that's hot, Kevin. So now it pretty much fits the right way. I, you know, again, you're gonna do a lot of little bit of sanding, getting this thing to really work out fine. You know, get in the cracks and the crevices. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a beat up scanner that, uh, again, you know, it shows up a few seconds in the movie, but I thought it'd be neat to have. So, just sort of placing things in, seeing how they're gonna fit. And, yep, you guessed it, I missed, uh, I missed something. So, that's gotta come out. Again, you know, you can't really do much wrong with this. Just keep breaking pieces off until things fit. Uh, a lot of hot glue, so now I'm gluing in that little circuit thing. For this, I, I, hot glue wasn't going to, you know, hold it, so I went ahead and first put in the buttons because I realized uh, 
things might start getting out of control and I might not be able to get those buttons back in. So I had some more coffee after I did that. And then went ahead and said, you know what? I need these switches. All these little things I had forgotten about. So I'm popping the switches off because I want to keep the switches, uh, these little things, uh, in the game still. So it looks like you could turn it on and off. And now I'm just, again, hot gluing them in place. So this way you still got the switches, you still have the buttons, everything looks the way it looks. There you go. You still see the buttons. Then I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of epoxy uh, to put this sort of um, handle thing on. I'm going to call it the on-off switch. So I put a little bit on both ends. And, you know, be careful with this stuff because it's pretty darn sticky. And it, it dries fairly quickly, uh, but you still get a little bit of time. So I went ahead and just attached that. And, uh, and then I said, how am I going to hold this here? So I put a little on the back just to make sure it was going to stay. And then I actually squirted a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, hot glue uh, in there to sort of hold it on uh, just right. Now, while that was drying, I had to cut the battery compartment off the back because, again, a phone has to fit in there. But don't cut off that little blue thing because that's where you can screw the uh, back case door back on. And if you get rid of that, then you're just going to have to glue it in. So I guess, you know, six half and one uh, dozen of the other. So I was excited. I was ready to go. And then I realized, wait a second, uh, this phone does not fit. So, you know, you're going to have to go in and there's going to be these little pieces and parts you know the those switches are very high so I'm cutting things of that off and pieces are flying around <laughs> like crazy so uh, it's just a lot of cutting then I realized that the phone needed to go up quite a bit farther and yes you guessed it I forgot to take a good deal of plastic off so went back to trimming the plastic off of the front of the scanner Okay, having taken all the plastic off, I decided I wanted to do a quick test to make sure that the graphics all lined up and that I didn't have to move it up any farther. So I went ahead and ran the video file that I got from the Soul Inertia uh, kit and hit play. So I uh, just drew some lines around where the phone needed to be and then went ahead and cut some foam up and added the foam to it so that it would not move around. Okay, and now for the fun part. I mean, it's all fun, but I love this part, the weathering. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, you could use paint, some black paint, some brown paint, but I really thought that the smudginess uh, that you get from these uh, these dry pigments would be, would be perfect. You can see that little black smudge starting there. And again, this is dry pigments. And you get them in different tones and different colors. But uh, I went ahead and uh, I'm using sort of the black and the brown. I don't use the white too much, uh, but it works pretty well. It goes on with a little makeup brush you get. And, uh, I'm seeing it's getting a little worn, so I'm going to be probably getting a, a, you know, using a different makeup brush at some point. And of course, what you're going to do is you're going to work this powder into the cracks, right? Into the details. This is where dirt and grime, they're going to go, right? They're going to go in these cracks. So it's just a question of working it in trying not to create a pattern and you have to be careful with this brush because it's you know it's thin so you could actually you know start getting these like liney patterns so I find that uh, you know putting a little bit down and it's sort of smudging around with your fingers really uh, works well and there we go and you can see how this is just looking very uh, very grimy very quickly and again th this dry stuff really does the trick for that and again I'm going to use some black and use some brown and I'm going to concentrate where you know you would see where happening you know you're going to see it in this area where these little creases and cracks are because that's where dirt is going to show up the sides sometimes I'll pick the device up and I'll sort of hold on to it and see where are my hands where would grime show up and uh you know, it's just a, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun doing this. So again, you're just working it in. I'm sort of jumping ahead here and putting it on the buttons. You can see how that powder makes those buttons just look grimy, look dirty. Paint, I don't know, it wouldn't have the same sort of grimy um, feel to it, I think. So I love these powders. And again, you can find the link uh, in the show notes. They're affiliate links, so if you click on them, you help out the page. So we're going to add a little bit more here. Then I kind of noticed that I needed that little piece of uh, electronics thing and even the thing itself to be even more beat up. 
So I went ahead and uh, if I could get the camera on the actual device, I went ahead and took the Dremel and just really scuffed those things up, scuffed everything up. Uh, little holes, little uh, lines. And the cool thing is when you do that, you can really get some nice uh, wear into the uh, cracks. And a little farther along, you can see where those cracks really show up really nicely that we just created with the uh, Dremel. And, you know, work all the way around to get everything uh, covered and coated. Again, don't go overboard. It's easy to make it maybe a little too grimy. Uh, I might have on this one, but uh, looking at the actual um, one on the screen, it is pretty beat up. So uh, I am very, very happy with this. And there we go. We are all weathered and we're ready to go ahead and test this thing out again. So I'm going to go ahead and put the phone into the container. Turn on the animation, and I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, get in a little bit closer so we can see what that animation looks like, because it is really cool. And then uh, let's turn the lights off and go ahead and see uh, what it looks like with a little bit darker. Oh, that looks awesome. Those graphics just look super cool. And there's a little bit of a sound going. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's making the sound it did in the movie. Really cool. Super, super happy with this build. Okay, so that was the Star-Lord scanner build. Super, uh, I haven't screwed it together yet, but super happy with how that turned out. Uh, great build, really fun. I was lucky to get this when it was still really cheap, just right when the movie came out. I think I spent maybe $15 on this. They're a little bit trickier to find now. Uh, be careful because there's, um, there's different models uh, of this. Uh, and you want to get the earlier one that looks sort of like this. It's got the, the graphics up here and down here. Now, again, I use the Soul uh, Inertia Kit. Uh, I've got links to that, again, in the show notes. And uh, you can just find that there. The The graphic looks cool. Uh, the little animation running through, really, <laughs> really neat. Again, even though this you know, wasn't in the movie a whole lot, uh, it was just a really fun build. One thing I did do is um, the video file is like a minute long. So I went ahead and just sort of spliced it together in Final Cut Pro and made it like 45 minutes. So now you know, it'll run and run and run. I turned the sound off on it because that would be annoying. But um, I was really happy with uh, it lasting a lot longer. So yeah, we've got the case. Boom, boom. Goes on here. I might add a piece of foam to this back stuff to, ha to hold the phone in a little bit better when uh, I screw it together. But yeah, really happy with it. Again, if you want any links to uh, Soul Inertia's uh, Etsy site or the uh, any of the products I use, especially like the, the dry rub sort of weathering kit, uh, just go down to the show notes. Those are affiliate links. So if you click on those, they help out the show. I can buy more weathering kit stuff. <laughs> uh, if you like the video, click like. Really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe. We've got a lot more videos coming out. Of course, if you uh, are in a community where people are digging cosplay stuff like this, go ahead and share those videos. That'd be fantastic. Uh, we've got some really fun ones coming up later in the week, uh, sort of rounding out the Star Lord stuff. We're going to be doing the, uh, these are the next few Rocket Boots. Then we're going to be doing the Blasters. Then the helmet, which is over there. You could probably see it. Uh, then that's pretty much it. Then we're probably going to do the pants because, you know, I've got to I've got to wear pants. And that should be it. That should be it. Got to buy the coat, weather the coat. But uh, next few builds are going to be a lot of fun. Uh, going to be adding LEDs and, you know, some sound. And so it should be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to those. So, again, if you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bop, bop,